Hello everybody, Princess Navarre here, and we're back at the Beach Club. Who'd have thought? We're going to Cape May for the first time ever for dinner. Yes, you guys have been very persistent about wanting to eat at this place, or wanting to see our view of this place. We did breakfast, you got that mm -hmm. yesterday, so here yeah. we are again for dinner. I guess we're gonna just go back to the Cape? Time to go see some food. Be sure to have a beachy time. I heard the girl. I hope so. Don't forget to hydrate yourself. I have two different types of rolls here. This one's like a, a bun that's kind of already infused together. So I'm just going to like take a piece of it. I don't even think I'm going to put butter because it's like already moist and wet. It's gluten-free. Very similar to the rolls that we have for breakfast. This one's really delicious. It's almost got like a sourdough vibe to it. I would give that like three out of five yeasties. Another day, another gluten-free slash plant-based roll. It smells like gluten-free. Tears like gluten-free. Butter's like gluten free. It's warm. Not the worst for a flood, but the best here. Two and a half out of five plus. And then we have this cute little roll, which I'm going to take a piece of as well. This one also feels gluten free. takes me back to those days when we went to boat rides at Port Orleans, which I miss. Disney, please reopen Port Orleans. It's all right. I'm gonna give it two and a half out of five Easties. This is literally a hamburger bun. At least it feels like one. Yeah, a little bit of this earth balance here. Always points to a place that has earth balance. And it's absolutely the butter we swear by at home. I would say the bun is better than the roll. Give it three out of five points. For the non-plant-based among us, you have two kinds of rolls. They have a regular Parker roll, and they also have cornbread. Happy about that. Break that apart. And they get us three kinds of butter. We have a regular, like, uh, fluffy butter. Then we have a garlic herb butter. And then a cheddar cheese cream cheese. So butter, butter, cream cheese. Let's go with the deadlier stuff first. Cheddar and cornbread? We can do that. I forgot to mention that the cheddar cream cheese is also herbed cream cheese. Wasn't expecting that. Strong but good. It was very well in the cornbread. Cornbread is dense, room temperature to cold. I wish it was hot. I love hot cornbread. It's pretty decent. It's not as good as the princess cornbread. I'm not saying that because, you know, I fear for my life or anything, but this is still pretty decent. Three and a half out of five cloths. It's definitely not better than the jalapeno cornbread from House of Blues, though. That is still top tier cornbread. As for this Parker roll, also cold. Warm rolls. Then we have this garlic butter over here. Also herb. You can see the herbs and all that nice green. A nice little spread. The garlic's subtle and not like blow you in the face. But it worked for the rolls. And then for this whipped butter. Huh? The rolls are decent house rolls. No issues with that. I give those two and a half out of five claws. As far as the spreads, I would give the cheddar cream cheese a four and a half out of five claws. A four out of five claws for the garlic butter. 
And then for the regular fluff butter, two and a half out of five fluffs. It's fluffy, but it's just regular butter. This roll is hard, like it was microwave. It's really difficult to pull apart. Nah. It's difficult to eat. It's so hard. Definitely microwave. And now we have a Mai Tai. Let's see what it tastes like. Okay, it's a little light on the pineapple, which I'm not mad at. I quite like this. It's a good little delicious, refreshing drinky drink. I would give this a three out of five pineapples. It's a good basic drink. Another Mai Tai. I feel like by the end of the year, I'm gonna go do some Mai Tai montage. If you want that, let us know. Ooh. That's Sunday Fundy in the glass. Three and a half out of five plus. Fair got a poblano pepper. Margarita. Yeah, I can taste the pepper. It's pretty decent. It's not spicy. It's just peppery. I would probably give that a three and a half out of five peppers. It's got a lot of really delicious flavor, more than the Mai Tai. Now, I keep getting these spicy poblano margaritas. Spicy in air quotes, of course. And I don't know why. I want a margarita at Disney that's actually going to hurt me. I want a margarita that's going to hurt me like 2020 hurt us all. And how the first six months of 2020 seems to be doing a lot of the same. 2021, that is. It tastes more like 2018. The savory pepper taste is there, just not the heat. Give that three out of five claws. So this is our nice little tossed salad. Most of the goodness is on the bottom. I'll take a little bit. It's probably a lot bit. And I love how these tongs look like rebel symbols. Don't they? Let's join the alliance. You know the dark side is better though. We've got beer and cookies. Just, you know, it's where it's at. All right, salad time. Got a nice orange vinaigrette happening here on the lettuce. Mm. It's very orangey. It almost feels like I ate a mandarin. Like it's like a salad with mandarin in it. But it's the dressing. It's, it's quite light. And great for like the summer. Which I guess fits the whole Cape May theme. I'm gonna give this four out of five lettuce leaves. Anything citrus is always gonna worry me. I like citrus, but not as much as the princess does. But I think we had enough here. Let's see what kind of trouble I can get myself into with this. Some nice big pieces of mandarin orange. There's little slivers of red onion, not huge slices, which I like. I don't like salads overpowered with onion. Especially where vinaigrettes are involved. Yep, I'm just using my fingers now. The orange is interesting, especially when it's got pepper on it. The vinaigrette is really light, so it's not overpowering. It's a nice, crunchy salad. I've got no problems with that. Look at that. Three out of five plus. I'm really excited for this tofu dish. These beautiful pieces of tofu with this rice. This is a huge bite, but I'm here for it. I'll commit to my mistakes. This was a happy mistake. The sauce is so sweet and amazing. Coupled with this rice that's just like mildly flavored. The tofu is really crunchy, but it's also really delicious. I'm gonna give this four out of five soybeans. This is a good dish. I don't wanna share this. 
if we'll give these anything for all the cart dishes for the plant based stuff, it's definitely presented rather nicely. You got this, what looks like seasoned rice, snow peas, some zucchini in here, some red pepper, and these little bites of tofu. Let's try to get a little bit in here. I can feel the princess doesn't want to share. The tofu is packed with flavor. The rice is seasoned well. Along with the uh, snow peas and the peppers and everything else. It's this nice, savory, like sweet flavor. And it works really well. I wish even half of the tofu dishes we got on property were this good. I would devour this whole thing on my own. I'd say four and a half out of five claws. I think if there was a little bit more tofu, I'd like it even more. So here we have a beautiful piece of portobello. It's a lot of portobello with this pasta underneath. So the pasta here is looking pretty uh, juicy. I'm just gonna get some of that with this portobello. Let's see what it tastes like together. Mm. The portobello just tastes like a nice piece of chicken or something. It does not taste like I just ate a mushroom. This is really good with like the balsamic on it. This is an amazing dish. I'm gonna give this five out of five mushrooms. I'm gonna devour this plate. I am. You know, this looks super interesting. So it's like beautifully displayed on here like well, just cut strips of protein, which is what mushrooms are. You have this delicious looking pasta underneath, some seasoned veggies, I'm seeing some pickled onions under here. Let's get that, if we can, and some mushroom. I think that's the best of mushroom I've ever tasted. The consistency is nothing like non-plant-based food, obviously, but the flavor and the chew is immaculate. It's well seasoned all the way through. You're not just getting like seasoned lathered on top. You literally bite into it and just like flavored how to wave in your mouth, which for a beach club makes sense. I give this also another solid four and a half out of five claws. This is a good job. Here we have the main plate and still some seafood to come. But for you people that don't like seafood at all, don't know why you would come here, but you have the option. We have some roast chicken, tons of it. Her top sirloin with the chimichurri sauce. There are uh, apparently infamous mashed potatoes and then some seasoned veggies over here on the side. And you have a little sauce here in the middle. Um, I think I'll just work my way around, eh? So there's the mashed potatoes, skin on. Nothing wrong with that. Those are some good mashed potatoes. Not as thick as I would like. And the flavor is like, on. Four out of five plus. As for this top sirloin, I don't want this whole huge piece. We're gonna cut into it. Come thread apart. Cook medium well, or medium uh, rare as it should be. Mm. The meat isn't as seasoned and savory as some of my others I've had on property. That chimichurri really brings it up. I give that three and a half out of five points. As for this chicken. Get a little nugget in here. There we go. A little bit of skin too. Looks well seasoned, roasted. Mm. 
You can tell it's slow roasted, packed with flavor, juicy, not dried out. That's the kind of chicken I'm give you the itis on its own. Four and a half out of five plus. We have some of these seasoned veggies here. And carrots, snow peas. Seems to be a very similar vegetable theme here. I'll give you a little bit of everything, but uh, they're seasoned and you can tell just by looking at them. Like somebody's beachside garden. No complaints. Well cooked, seasoned well. Three out of five plus. So here we have a cheesy delight. I'm assuming if you love cheese, you're gonna love this. So they have a four cheese, lobster mac and cheese, with herb breadcrumbs on top, and then crushed goldfish sprinkled on top as well. So I guess it's technically five cheese in a way. But it is filled. Just look in there. You have all sorts of like crab deliciousness in there. Or lobster, I'm sorry. Little pieces of it, you can smell it. Ooh, little piece right there. Ah, yes. The breadcrumbs. This is like the sort of thing you see on like a, a cheese challenge. Brings nice and satisfying. I couldn't separate the four cheeses from each other, but it's super cheesy. And then in the back end, you have that savory lobster. I could probably do without the crushed goldfish, but otherwise, it is packed with flavor, seasoned well. I probably couldn't eat any more than this. I probably need half of this, but it's really good. I definitely suggest you try this if you come here. Four out of five plus. Finally, time for the seafood. This is the boil that comes regular with the meal. Or brought you this cute little bowl. We have mussels, a little bit of sea roach here, clams, a little slice of lemon, a little mini corn on the cob. This is your own personal boil. You don't fight anybody for it. You can get your tools. I think this is for my lobster and crab. So I don't need this yet. But uh, let's go ahead and dig in. This monstrous, like, what is this? Oh, this is like a herb fish, white fish. Mm. Mm. It's excellent. Well cooked. I'm making a mess. Well cooked. Herbs on top go nicely. It's nicely like blackened or lightly blackened on top. But you have got no complaints. Nice way to start off the boil. Three out of five points. There's a little corn on the cobs. Would be interesting they looked into here. They're gonna do boils. We've made one at home. A plant-based boil. We'll leave that link in the comments below. They should make a plant-based boil here. I think it's 100 percent possible for them to do. Mmm. I wasn't touching all my disgusting meat. The princess would love that. Four and a half out of five plus. That nice seared lemon. Give that a squeeze over top here. And dig out a little shrimp. I want to know, are you guys shell on, shell off? I can go either way. Nice shrimp. You can use um, some sauce, but it's well cooked all the way through, not rubbery. We have some oysters here, some small oysters, but oysters nonetheless. Oysters definitely rank among those foods that I think is usually more trouble to eat than it's worth. Mm, so really good. What this needs? It needs hot sauce. There's some muscle in here whose meat has escaped. There's one. Nice thick muscle. It's a little average size guy. A little cooked and split open. Mm. It's nice and soft, full of broth. Very well cooked. Four to five pounds. Mm. Down here, buried at the very bottom. These little baby tomatoes are just sitting in the broth, soaking it all up. 
a little chunky. They're just going to send me cook a little bit longer. I'm give those a two out of five paws. Definitely not my favorite part, but it's a good well seasoned boil. Overall, I just boil three and a half out of five paws. If you like boils, go like this. Disney, give me my hot sauce. So here we have the whole Maine lobster, and it is whole. Now they said that it's weighed out there a pound and a quarter. That's an additional $35 on top of the normal uh, buff or all you care to enjoy fee, which is 45? 42. $42. So 42 plus 35, and then be another 29 for the crab legs once they get here. Give a little side of butter, and basically the whole, the whole pinchy. You can't name him Sebastian, that's just rude. How about we name him Carl? He couldn't stay in the house. Carl the Lobster. On this, I don't even know where to start. I've never eaten a whole lobster before. So then you have the tail section. They broke that out for you. They have the claws. They already opened up on each side here. You don't have to dig those out. But they didn't open the center. They do have the tail meat kind of coming out here. So you've never eaten a, a lobster before. You have the tail. Which is what most people usually get a rest of the lobster tail. Then you have the claws. And then the main claws up here. There's also meat in the legs. And then there's a little bit in here. But then there's like uh, the like fleshy parts on the side. That the Those don't taste great. But the rest of it is free to eat. Just dig it out here. This little teeny weeny fork. Dip it in some of this butter here. That's how a savory fresh lobster is supposed to taste. I don't know what kind of seafood person some of you in the community are now. I like butter on my on my lobster and uh, my lobster and uh, crab leg, but only a little bit. I could I can't dunk every single thing in there. It's just way too much butter for me. I'll just eat it how it's cooked with no problem. And for what it costs, you had better eat all of it. Mmm. You give that three and a half out of five points. Huge piece of tail meat. Mm. That's some good lobby. I'm gonna stick with my three and a half paw rating, but it's very good. If you like lobster, you're on Disney property, one of the few places you can get it, I'd say go for it. It's weird, this is like the first time I've ever ordered lobster, took a whole lobster out in public. Here's my little pail of lobster legs. And the lobsters, like I said, $29 extra. You get a pound of lobsters in this bucket. It's basically like, basically like two crab bunches, one and a half, and then a claw that's at the bottom there. Start. Actually, I'm just going to get this claw. Make it easy. Boop. Kind of just need a plate to eat it over, but they give you a little meat grabber. I don't know who uses these. I definitely don't. Then you have a uh, little claw cracker for these. But uh, I didn't grow up using either. Let's see if I'm still as good as I think I am. Trying to spray the princess. I'm used to crab legs being cheap, like chicken cheap. For $29 for a pound is expensive, especially given the current climate. But uh, we looked it up and apparently there's been a shortage of crab this year with everything going on with the press panini, some of the shutdowns and whatnot. So they're passing that price on to us, I suppose. It's a luxury, definitely a luxury. It's well cooked crab. As long as you don't overcook it, and that's extremely hard to do, you can't usually go wrong with crab. 
nice thick piece of claw meat here. I love crab, but I usually find like most like hard shell seafood that uh, the little bit of meat you get is not worth all the work. Like sunflower teas to me. It tastes good, but you're willing to do it for the flavor and not for the actual filling quality of the meat. There's not enough of it to fill you up. I guess I'm going to do this little diggy thing. You just get in there and you dig out the meat. When you don't pull the meat out whole, it can get kind of messy if you've never had crab legs before. Overall, I would give these crab legs four to five claws. It's not that special, it's like your normal boil. It's not super spicy or anything like that, like a Cajun crab leg, but for somebody that doesn't get crabs regularly, I would say it's above average. I'm gonna give it a four out of five plus. If you can afford it and you wanna treat yourself, I say do it, but out of protest, I probably would not order these on my own. Not for $30. So, this centerpiece here in the middle, some people will tell you not to eat it. It's an acquired taste. Some people like it, some people hate it, but it is edible. They do warn you to try not to eat too much of it because uh, it can contain some toxins. But like I think the recommended limit for Canada is like one a day. Who's gonna eat more than one lobster a day? Look like if I eat one lobster in 10 years. Mm. Nice and savory. Four to five plus. I plagued the bear with another glow cube. This is the glow teeny. It's got vodka, it's got schnapps, it's got blue Morocco. It's very strong and quite delicious martini. I'm gonna give it two out of five glow cubes because it could be better. I still say after all this time, death to all glow cubes. They add nothing but cost. It's a teeny. It tastes like a martini. Probably less strong than some of the others I had, but if you're looking for something festive, I guess, that glows and lights up your face, there's always this. But I've had better drinks at Disney property. Two and a half out of five points. Would a trip to Disney be complete without Bear getting a smoked turkey? I don't think so. This one has a lot of liquid smoke, not as much whiskey as like what we're used to. It's a little uh, on the light side. I would give that a two out of five wild turkeys. I've ranted and raved in this channel about my love for smoked turkeys wherever I can find them. They're not all made equal. So let's see how this tastes. Not enough wild turkey. Way too much liquid smoke. Mm. Like very heavy on that liquid smoke pour. My favorite places to get this are usually at Victoria Falls Lounge when it's open. It's been a while. Or Crockett's Tavern Bar at uh, the Fort Wilderness Campground. I can't really get to either of those places easily, so I'm always happy when I can find the drink somewhere else. This is definitely not my bare necessities 5 out of 5. I would give this 3 out of 5 claws just because there's so much liquid smoke in there. I can barely even taste the lemonade. While Bear's eating all his seafood, I couldn't just sit here by myself, and I love this tofu dish so much, I had to get another plate. It was, it's a small enough dish to where you could order and eat too. Challenge accepted. I feel like uh, Thanos versus the Avengers are over here. All that for a little bit of blood. It was good. Now I got seafood fingers. Yes. I 
love seafood. I hate seafood fingers. I do not want everything I touch for the rest of the night to smell like the carpet of the crab. We have the plant-based tiramisu. It's beautiful. I have never really had a plant-based tiramisu. I haven't had tiramisu since I could eat or would eat dairy. It's been some years. It smells like a coffee sponge. Tastes a little more cakey and a little less coffee than your traditional tiramisu. And I actually quite like that a lot. The only thing that I didn't like the most about tiramisu is like the part of the, the cake soaked in the coffee. It was just too much coffee for me. I don't really like like heavy coffee taste in my dessert. This one I feel is much better because it's lighter in flavor than your traditional tiramisu. I'm going to give it two out of five coffees. I am a de self-proclaimed dessert noob. I have no idea what to expect other than the flavors of coffee. I think it's a full cross-section. I think that classifies as giving it a try. Not bad. It's interesting. It tastes of sponge cake. I don't know if I'm a fan. I think it's okay. I do taste the coffee. I don't know if I'm in love with it. I can sort of see why people like this. Eh, not so much. I think it's something plant-based. I definitely don't taste that it's plant-based. But you know me and desserts. For what it is, I'll give it a 3 out of 5 plus. Whew. I'm going to need that spoon. Nice mousse inside. It's pineapple, but very light pineapple. Very like refreshing. That three and a half out of five plus. Now this little puff looking thingy. I had to demolish it. Some pink filling inside. It's a very weird texture. I don't know if I like that. I don't. Two out of five balls. This little guy. Let's take this little chocolate off the top. I'd like just a straight lemon cake with icing and some white chocolate on top. It's strong. Two out of five plus. And this little cup dealing. Let's get a full cross section here. And a little white chocolate on top. Gimme, give gimme. Give Whipped cream, strawberry syrup, and what tastes like custard, more custard, two and a half out of five plus. We have a little cake. little mini layered chocolate cake. That one's probably my favorite so far. Four out of five plus. Here we have a little chocolate bonbon on top of an Oreo. Mm. That's surprisingly good. Out of all those, I think that's my favorite. 
after that four and a half out of five loaves, I definitely cannot have any more of that. It's way too rich and sugary for me. So, Cape May Cafe, or Cape May for dinner. Breakfast was good. Yes. The only redeeming quality today was the food. The food was pretty delicious. Obviously, I got two of the tofu dishes. I don't usually get two of a dish. The service was appalling. Like, I waited two hours for a water refill. She came to our table like eight times. She brought it up four times before she actually brought me water. She, our waitress, did acknowledge the fact that our service was crap and apologized a few times. But she basically ignored our table so that she could do her dinner rush and then took care of us after the fact. So we got to see like about five tables we waited on from beginning to end before she even refilled our water. There were some long waits between service. Winter said this place just open for this week people getting back in the groove. Obviously that's not what we typically expect when we go to a Disney restaurant, but the food was a redeeming quality. I was surprised at the quality of the food given that it used to be a buffet now, family style dining. And we'll have to say that if it wasn't for the review, there is no way in the world I would have paid $29 for crab legs. Honestly, I was secretly hoping to see Chef TJ. We've been to Trails End once and the service there was also appalling and I never got the Chef TJ experience. I was really hoping that I'd get that this time too. He never came to our table. It was just, this is what you get. It was, it was sad for me. It was really sad. I, I was expecting to, to have this amazing experience that I always hear everybody talk about that apparently is just not in the cards for us. Well, you know, with the, based on what you saw tonight and the food, are you scheduling your next meal for Cape May? If so, let us know in the comments. Is there anywhere else around Walt Disney World you'd like to see us do, go, or review? That's going to be the place to let us know. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. And like this video. And eat that Cape May food. It is good. Just get a different server. Which we're not going to tell you who the server is. Ask for Larry. Larry's the best.